The Milwaukee Bucks are the 2021 NBA champions. Commiserations to the Phoenix Suns and Monty Williams and Chris Paul and Devin Booker for putting up a great fight. But there's only one man, there's only one sheriff in town right now, and his name is Giannis Antetokounmpo. This is Eyes on the Court. Here we go. Yo, I'm trying to get my sterling up in the city, so since we play, as soon as my child can walk, it's straight project Mbappé. But no the verbal, as soon as I hear that whistle, we get straight to the action. Come on, lads, where's the passion? Do like Alan Matsini, wear headbands for the fashion. If the defenders drop back, we counter and then attack them. I got my eye on the ball, I got my eye on the ball, yeah. Uh, I got my eye on the boat. I got my eye on the boat. Yeah, I got my eye on the boat. I got my eye on the boat. Yes, yes, people. It's eyes on the court. You already know where it is. Your favorite UK NBA podcast. The lads are back together. Last eyes of the court. Eyes on the court of the season, and we have our champions of 2021. Fans back in the stadiums, like they should be. And the Milwaukee Bucks come home with the 2021 NBA title, man. Be honest, man. Um, back-to-back MVPs. Now they add the finals MVP to it. Defensive player of the year. The chip. Yeah, man. The chip. I mean, hey, top nah, of the track, man. Yeah, listen. Um, it's all about Giannis, man. All about Giannis. Um, yesterday, yo, you, it doesn't get better than that when you're talking about close-out games. Man dropped 50. But on his way to winning the chip, um, yeah, man, he was amazing, man. <laughs> yeah, he was amazing, man. But, um, yeah, no, nah, I just give all the flowers to Giannis. Obviously, that's initially we're just getting getting the show started, but we got to say it off with Giannis, man. I think defensively, offensively, um, even even like maturity, like he stopped, he, he handled the ball a little bit less because he figured out, you know, I'm going to have more success crashing the glass getting put backs. Um, even the post moves that we were asking for, we saw more of that. That little turnaround jump shot, he's knocking that down a little bit as well. Like, hey, if he gets consistent with that turnaround jump shot and the post moves, it's only going to get worse from the, for the whole league from here. But, um, yeah, man, Budenholzer as well. Made some big-time adjustments, but just to start the show off, man, Giannis, man. You go. <laughs> Add the to Kumba. Yeah, for sure, man. Nadim, what do you what do you think about Giannis and the Bucks and how they were able to to practically win four games in a row? Like they just mm-hmm. l- l- use the first two games, Ty esque use the first two <laughs> games to see, to, to, to um see what the opponent was saying and then steamroll them. If we're being honest, I mean, where do I start? First of all, I need to mention, need to talk about something Darren said when he said if he can get that the post move sorted. It could be finished for the league. This guy is 26. He's not even in his prime yet. And he's already achieved more than some of the all-time greats. This guy is is incredible. Like, even without the take away the championships and the finals MVP. What this guy has achieved so early on in his career is amazing. So all credit to him. It's just he's a testament to hard work. Like when you put the work in, this is the the benefit the these are the What's the word? The rewards. The rewards, basically. This is what you get. So, you know, a lot of congratulations to him and, and his family, of course. I think with the Bucks, one thing, obviously, they just made the Phoenix Suns play their game. They they were so physical with Chris Paul and Devin Booker that Devin Booker, in the games where he dropped 40 points and, and he had those big games, he was having to hit tough shots after tough shots after tough shots. And as skilled as he is and as great as he is, it's not really sustainable, especially when you're going against Drew Holiday. And when you're trying to look for mismatches, Pat Connaughton is the worst defender you can apparently find. And he's a good defender. So yeah, there just wasn't much there for, for the Phoenix Suns to do. I think sometimes when the Suns lose or teams lose in the finals, is about what they could have done. I think this is about the Bucs, man. They, they just did everything they had to do. Giannis was incredibly special. Coach Budenholzer, he shot a lot of people up because remember at the start of the finals when people would use that clip of Monty Williams and they used the clip of him to slander him. Bro. He's a great coach. 
And now Jalen you're... Rose called out Perk on today, fam. And Perk was trying to back watch him. Exactly. Bro, you need to go watch it, man. You need... Perk was just chatting out of his yeah. ass of as usual. I, I stop hating on Perk, man. Stop no, hating a lot on Perk. Awesome uh, Darren's trying to back saying. Perk, bro. Perk, Perk is annoying, bro. Like, if you see what you, <laughs> when you watch the Jalen Rose debate today, Jalen Rose watched him it. out. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, I watched it. But Jalen Rose, he was, he was shading you know him a little bit, though. No, you know what it is? It's it was okay a bit of shade. It's yeah. okay to be wrong, but not in that way. Like, you tried to um, slander this I guy. Tried and, to and disrespect someone who's been one of the best coaches. Um, um, but you know, you guys, you guys know how ESPN works. They just look for hot takes and... Oh. He's not the only guy that does that at ESPN. Isn't no, it? I know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not trying to make it a perk thing. But it, what they did to Budenholzer was disrespectful. Moving as if that's what he tells his team every single day. Like, I'm yeah, not, that was just silly. That was just silly. Thing. Yeah, yeah it's an ESPN thing. Yeah, yeah. How can you take one five second clip, one bro, five second clip and say take that and take, that, and take the best <laughs> best clip from Monty Williams? Like, bro, that is so <laughs> silly. That's like me taking a clip of when Giannis is getting bullied by the hole and then we start dropping clips of tj warren in the bubble and then we tell <laughs> someone who hasn't watched the nba tj warren's better than Giannis fam come on man <laughs> like it's but do you know what look away from that though something yeah. i wanted to touch on that you actually mentioned was the adjustments that budenhoser did make and as much as Giannis is going to get all the credit just like what we did last year with the lakers and how much credit we needed to give frank vogel because till this day i still don't think frank vogel gets the credit that he deserves for the championship that they won last year Budenhoser deserves tremendous amounts of credit this year. Bro, going small to make sure that even when the Suns were looking for switches, the guy you're switching onto is another quality defender. perimeter defender. Bro, that, that, that was a key switch that was causing the Suns havoc. Just like I said off air, bro, what happened over time? And obviously, as much as we give Monty Williams so much praise, I even tweeted, I think he's a top five coach right now already. He deserves a bit of a, a bit of the blame, and this is a learning curve for him. In the fact that I think that what happened is progressively their offense became stale. It became too predictable, and that is the key word. It became too predictable. I said off air three things that I just think were their go-to: Chris Paul mid-range, looking for the pick and roll, looking for the the collapse, and then he's going for that mid-range. Devin Booker with the kind of ISO trying to get hot. To everyone clear out the way, isolate the defender, get into the lane, or hit a free over his defender, or the or the or the DeAndre Ayton alley -oop, or the pass in the lane um, when the pick and roll happens, and then he's got the mismatch. And bro, let me not even lie to you, yeah, we gave Ayton so much credit, he was getting chewed. He looked nervous. Oh my days, he looked. He, um, he had he, a he, he, moment. Like people don't realize it. He had a bro. moment where he was next to the room, put it in. He turned around, <laughs> <laughs> bro. Well, we let him, we let him live on that one. He's okay for that. No, one. no, yeah, bro, he's not, yeah. yeah, he's not. Yeah, a, he didn't have a bit. Yeah, bro, right. he's not a number one option. He's not a yeah. best center in the league. And he's only like what twenty one, twenty two. You know what I mean? First playoff yeah, yeah. appearance again, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, yeah. and you're up against you're up against the modern Shaq. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, not no, many big, and and he's the only guy on their front line. I think that is where the series really was decided. Mm. That the Bucks, the Bucks said we're bigger, we're stronger, we're Thank faster, you. and and they put that they put that into practice. Do you know what I mean? They had, there were points where they were playing Giannis, Portis, and Lopez, all three of them together, bro, bro. And Aiton can only guard one of those guys. There was, Do you know a... what I mean, and Sarich got injured. Who was your backup big man? So it's like they didn't have Kamin any and size. He was just not. Kamin's he's not good. Played well in game yeah. six, yeah, but he's not. He's not a defender, in it. He's yeah. more of an offensive player than a scorer. Yeah. I mean, but than like, a defender. But like, again, this goes back to something I said after game two when Giannis had that big game and Middleton and Drew Holiday struggled. I don't like seeing Giannis in the perimeter trying to do isos and running downhill. When he was in the paint, when he was getting close to the basket, they couldn't stop him. Bro. Someone made a tweet said, um, it said, uh, uh, what's his name? Aiton knows exactly where Giannis is going. They both know it's what's coming, and he can't. But he stop. can do nothing about it. He can't it, do yeah. nothing about it. Yeah. Yeah. Eighteen free throws yesterday in a game that wasn't that the calls weren't nineteen, and he free. made seventeen. Exactly. So that tells you that when he's being aggressive and he's right next to the rim, there's nothing anyone in the league can really do about about it. That's why I didn't like seeing him on the perimeter. I feel like he's wasting everyone's time at that point. Even I mean above. Her Yo, go on, go on. Sorry, sorry. No, even Van Gundy said yesterday, he said if, if Giannis takes a, sh uh, a jump shot, whether it goes in or not, the Phoenix Suns defense won. When he got next to the rim, when he attacked the rim, and he was doing post-ups 
unstoppable. Yes. Yeah. And look, at the end of the day, what I've always said and what I truly believe in, I think it was me and Darren who had a conversation about it. Maybe at, when we were just chilling one time. And I, like, I, I always wondered, yeah, bro, Shaq never received the same level of scrutiny that Giannis did. And I, I never understood why Giannis got, like, bro, what we said was Giannis needs a jump shot. Giannis needs to be able to hit free throws. We said Giannis needs to be able to do this. Giannis needs to be able to do that. But Giannis was still dominating. Giannis was exactly. still getting... Exactly. That's to be players. like the perfect the basketball player. player. Bro, like you're basically exactly. saying Giannis needs to be the greatest basketball player of all time with the skill set that he needs to exactly. improve on. Or he's exactly. not good. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. And yeah. so for me, like, bro, what makes it even better is I don't care what anyone says. This is my opinion. And I, I stand by it to this day. Bro, all championships aren't created equal. And as much as we can factor in the fact that the Bucks might not have made the finals if all teams were fit, so the Nets, um, 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 the Lakers, the Clippers, if they face the Clippers in the finals, this ring means more than so many other um, players' rings because he won this ring at the team he was drafted at. He grinded. He received all the level of scrutiny. Bro, even in these finals, he was being disrespected to the point where people were saying that he might not even be the finals MVP. Like, that was even in the question. Some people were saying that. So, like, he deserves all the credit he's, he gets right now in a, in a closeout game to drop 50 and 15. 50, 15 and 5, I think it was. Five blocks. Bro. Protecting the basket like a madman. Man. Apparently, great. somebody said that uh, before the start of the series, someone in the media said that Giannis is the best player in this series. Bro, I'm not gonna say the name. Who said that? My friend, my friend told me last night. I was texting him during the game, and he said that this person in the media said this. I said, "Are you saying?" I'm, I'm sure they work at ESPN. I'm sure <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. We'll no about way is the but, other network. We'll wow. about about the, thing is, the thing is, look, every you can say all championships aren't created equal, and obviously some will mean more to, to the to the fans, especially more than anything as well. And to the city of Milwaukee that hasn't had a championship in 50 years, this means everything. And when you look at the most incredible story I ever I heard coming out of these playoffs wasn't about the past of their family or their growing up, was the fact that Giannis and Middleton were one stage competing for minutes on the team like Bro. they're not supposed to be here like they're really not supposed to this is a true underdog story that you honest middleton was in the g league he was in the g league g league players aren't supposed to be uh, um second best closes close yeah. to close games happens. so stuff like that just it makes you i think you fall in love with stories like that i think because it shows that not everything is handed to you but if you work hard you can get to that certain level but i also think you can't disrespect anyone else's I'm not saying you are, but you can't disrespect anyone else's grind. Like we've seen how hard championships are to get. Like, you've seen the guys go over injured this season. It's part luck. Like, you need some luck, but as well, like it takes a lot of hard work and dedication to get there. Like we can talk about it, but I'm looking at some of these guys go out and play. I'm thinking this NBA stuff isn't easy. Like it really isn't yeah. easy. So to win a championship really is obviously incredibly difficult. But no, for the way Giannis and Middleton did it, those two especially, no, all respect yeah. to them. Yeah. 100%. Darren, I'm mm, going to ask definitely. you a question. But before I ask that question, the lead up for it is that, look, Giannis, for me, especially just with all the celebrations, I watched the game and then went straight to bed just because of work. But I, get, I got to watch all the celebrations again today and whatnot, see the interviews and whatnot. Like, Giannis is one of the most likable guys in the league. He's become, like, a very friendly figure. Everyone's fallen in love with his story. I think, in terms of progression, correct me if I'm wrong, Did he, has Giannis won most improved player? Yep. Yeah, I think so. Cool. So in terms of progression, in terms of progressively seeing how a player has become better in the league, so not that he's been the number one draft pick where he, the expectation has been there for him to be a star and to have the ceiling of, of one of the all-time greats. Because Giannis now, for me, has solidified the fact that he will be a Hall of Famer at the end of his career. He's become now this likable guy yeah, where there are arguments where he could be the face of the league where this 26-year-old guy is the guy that the mantle is being passed on to slowly. In your opinion, Darren, is Giannis the best player in the league now? Um, I think you can definitely make that case. Um, the most dominant player in the league, I think that's pretty emphatic when it comes to that one. I think he's clearly the most dominant player in the league. 
Um, yeah. best player in the league. I'm still gonna, um, you know, give give the big guns, you know, their 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 love. Yeah, you know I mean, I still think the rightful king sits on the throne in LeBron, <laughs> but KD KD is also um above him as well. Do you know what I mean? That's been the top two for the past 10, 15 years. Um, you know, I can't, I don't want to, you know, give Giannis the, the keys <laughs> when, you know, KD didn't really have his full squad, you know, AD went down. Do you know what I mean? There's context. Do you know what I mean? But for me, it's less about comparisons, man. More about just appreciating Giannis's greatness because mm-hmm. as the stuff that we said, the guy is, for me, is, I said, if, if he wins uh, this chip, the guy has solidified himself as all-time great. At, no, I don't think uh, at 26 years old, he's probably got one of the best resumes for a 26-year-old in NBA history. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. I think Magic, Magic obviously won the chip Kareem? when he was a rookie. Kareem won it in his first couple of years. And um, there's one more. He, what, what was yeah, Larry Bird like? I can't remember. Larry Bird like, did that in his early years, exactly, because he had a so short career. The year, the year, the year that... Giannis won his in terms of their timeline contract wise. I think it was even a year after that LeBron won his. Okay, okay. So about, um, like his seventh or eighth year in the league. Going to yeah, the no, no, I was trying to because I was trying to think of, of people who have had the resumes that Giannis have had. And I haven't done my research on this, but I was wondering, does anyone know what Tim Duncan's was like at twenty six? Yeah, yes, Tim Duncan won the Bro, he won it in his, in his rookie second, second season. Second mm-hmm. season, he won. Bro, he was an MVP candidate in his rookie season. Yeah. So yeah, he's yeah. he's definitely got yeah. an elite resume. But when it comes to Giannis, man, I just think, um, yeah, as I said, less about the comparison and just appreciating what he's about, man. Literally, the modern day Shaq, um, and we should pay more attention to what he can do rather than he can't do. Especially yeah. now, he's got a chip. Yeah, I mean, now he's got a chip. It's like, don't question him, man. And don't question him, man. That's the question that I have now to Nadim. Like, now that the Bucks have got this monkey off their back, what's so interesting is that for the last two years, the Bucks have been the favorites. The, the year that they weren't considered favorites is the year that they finally win it. The Bucks are now in a situation where they've got the chip, they've got the monkey off their back. They're now dark horses. Like, do you, do you know what I mean? Because they say the Lakers are coming back. The Warriors are coming back. The 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 um the Nets are coming back. The 76ers Oops. are coming back. We don't know where <laughs> Lillard ends up. No, I'm not, I, I'm still, not, I still think they're the third I'm, favorites, though. Mm-hmm. I still think they're the third favorite. And I think they have... Really? Yes. And listen, I said it to a big man. If the Nets are not fully healthy, now that the Bucks are battle-tested and they won a chip, two out of three is not enough. If they're not all free, fully healthy, they're not beating the Bucks. I don't know about that, but the reason, look, I, I, I don't want to get into that because that's like a whole different podcast for a whole that's, different day. That's September talk, bro. Like, that's yeah. Obviously, like the way I see it is the evidence that's available to us is that when Kyrie and KD were available, the Bucks were getting blown out, and the one game that they did manage to win when Kyrie and KD played together, they skinned it. I think it was a game-winning shot by Middleton. Um, in game four, something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Went down in game five. Was, so it was game three. Yeah, but fam, the yeah, Suns blew the Suns blew them out the first two games as well. Then look what happened. Giannis was injured though. Giannis was coming back off of an injury. Fair, fair, but I still think my my point still stands that I think no, no, the, no, the Bucks yeah, are still um, even, an yeah, elite yeah, I team. I think Dark Horse was, is was an overstatement. What was yeah, yeah, I don't want to get into that. But what what I wanted to get into was the fact that. The pressure is now off the Bucks, and that's what I meant in terms okay, of that. Okay, okay. The pressure is off the Bucks now, and that makes them an even more dangerous outfit because they're mm-hmm. not going to be the team expected to win back-to-back chips. Do you know what I'm saying now? Because there's other teams ahead of them. So, for example, mm-hmm. if the Bucks face the Nets again next year, maybe in the Eastern Conference Finals, bro, all the pressure in the world will be on the Nets, for example. For and sure. that is what helps Giannis and the Bucks going forward. Bro, you run it back with the same team. Like, fam, that team that team that team is a scary team. Like they 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 yeah. figured it out. They figured it out. And what I really love about that team even more than anything is it's the balance, man. It's not a team where it's overstacked with stars. So you know that they're never the inevitable outcome is the team with the highest talent wins. Bro, it's yeah. of course they've got quality players, but they've got a balance to their team, which I really like, man. And Giannis deserves a lot of credit for sticking by it. What, what were people saying at the beginning of the season? Miami, Mavericks, the Warriors, 
telling Giannis, don't sign the contract. You're not going to win in Milwaukee. It's impossible. You can't attract the best of stars. So, bro, you've you know, got to give all credit to him. But to, to that point, do you know why rings are such a fickle thing in a way? And they're such a, they're not the pure determiner of players' greatness. Like, mm -hmm. Do you think any less of Chris Paul today than you did yesterday? I don't. I still think he's one of the Hall of Fame point guards. Like he's a Hall of Fame point guard to me. No, I like, think he's. Oh, before you answer that, before you don't look at this, like we are literally one inch, like KD's big toe away from people questioning whether Giannis can win a title in Milwaukee. Whether saying he should well, be, in, he should go to For Portland sure. with game. They're That's them. why it's such a fickle thing. Like they're Giannis them. was great already. And then what do we, what do we, what do we say about basketball all the time? I think we've discussed this so many times. Basketball, yeah. football. Whatever sport you're in, it's all about margins, bro. Your your legacy is defined by the margins. The Suns were Giannis' injury away from winning the chip. Giannis wasn't fully healthy, or Giannis mm -hmm. was injured and not out of the series, they would have won. Let's look at yeah. let's look at the common denominator in the in the Suns' um, path to the finals. AD got injured. Um, it, it, in the in the in the what's it called the Utah series was it Utah they played no who did they play in the second oh, round the Suns Jamal Suns. Ma no the first round. Nuggets the Nuggets oh yeah Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray wasn't fit finals Kawhi got injured this finals again we're thinking Giannis gets injured as well it's all mm. about the margins and for me what's happened in Chris Paul's career is he's gotten to the top of the bottle but when it's time for him to fizz and blow off the cap he can't do it. And it's not all on him, of course. I'm not. I'm not trying to get into the line of ah, uh, he's not great anymore, bro. He's. I still think he's in the conversation for top five point guards. However, what I said was a chip would have guaranteed top five. Now I think it's even more debatable. I think what makes it even worse is the fact that he was two nil, two nil up, and he's one of. The, he's in. The, he has that Doc Doc Rivers thing where. He has so many unwanted records on his resume that it just looks bad. And I don't like a guy like Chris Poole having bad things on him, but at the end of the day, bro, he has to own them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. He has to own own those things. And, like, it's it's, it's sad, man. I, I don't know what you, man, think about it, but I just think it's sad because I love Fam, Chris Poole. He... I love Chris Poole, but it's, it's sad, man. It, it, it's the reality that he has bad stuff on his resume. I, I think he just wears down like during series because his resume is just stacked with instances where he just gets injured. You know what I mean, during the series, then he can't see it out. That's happened so many times. Um, this series, he literally got based until game six, he basically got worse um, by the game. Do you know what I mean? He, game one, he was the best player on the court. Game two, he was still good. Then uh, as the series progressed, he just kept getting worse and worse. And um, a common thread that we know in the league, fam, is, is, is how many small point guards have led their team to a championship. There's only two guys. There's only two guys in the history of the league that have done it. That's yeah. Steph, Steph Curry. Yeah. Who's the third? Chauncey. Chauncey went. That was more like a. That was more of a, a great, great team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rather yeah. than, do you know what I mean? Than that like superstar Isaiah, leading them to the um. Yeah, Steph and Isaiah Thomas. Do you know what I mean? And those two are... Uh, Isaiah Thomas is probably one of the most underrated players to ever play the game. And everyone knows what Steph is about. And let's not forget what Steph has had with him his whole career. He's had Clay Thompson and he's had Draymond Green. Do you know yeah. what I mean? I think it's it's obviously... That's why I say, it, for me, it doesn't diminish his legacy. Do you know what I mean? It, but the analogy that you gave is also correct, that he doesn't have that pop ability. But how many point guards have had that? Do you know what I mean? Like... It's hard to have no, that look. to be your best when you're on the court with all of the elite players and they're twice your size. Do you know what I mean? No. It's hard to, to be that guy. I, I, I agree, but it's the fact that he's considered the point guard, the point guard, the point Jesus, the point this, the point that. Like, he's considered the best pure point guard. He's given all these acronyms. I think and that bro, also... My thing is, my thing is very quickly, it's because it ties together, then you can go. My thing is, you you have to be praised when you deserve to be praised, which Chris Paul has been across this whole series or across this whole playoffs. But you also have to be criticised when the body of work speaks for itself. Bro, the point I'm trying to make is, even though he had a good game six, I'm telling people that I don't think he played well in the fact that the point of Chris Paul this whole series or for the Suns this whole season has been about making everyone else around him better. I think he went out in that game thinking, I need to have a good game. And it almost made 
other people not have bro chris paul is the glue guy if chris paul is not feeding you and not making you play well chris paul makes them play well and that's what but like, that's the happen that's my the thing with like, that is though it's you normally have a, a role player that can be that glue guy a pj tucker a draymond green uh do you got know i mean a gritty guy like that the songs don't have that Jay i guess you can say it's crowder but crowder's so up and down do you know what I mean? Quado will have a game where he's lining up from free, and then he'll have a game where he's uh can't can't make open shots. He'll have a game where he looks like he can guard Giannis, and then he's getting dunked on every play. Do you know what I mean? So it's like it's hard to ask your superstar to be the glue guy as well. You're asking him to be the floor that's general, it. you're that's asking him to put up 30 though. points a night. But that's like it, it, we're talking about expectations though. Just based on your reputation doesn't mean that we can expect you to do everything. And I also yeah, think the fact that he's in this era where there's not a lot of floor generals, that's why he gets bigged up so much. Do you know what I mean? But if we're comparing him to, to actual floor generals, he's one of the best. But like, I just think we can't put unnecessary expectations on him, innit? But the thing is, as well, it, it, he's any other probably point guard he goes against in that matchup, he probably plays well. He went against Joe Holiday, who is the one defensive guard that a lot of point guards don't want to see. Jordan is, is physical, he's big, and he's a great defender. He's a and he's fast. He, he's a he's a pest. I don't want to say he's what Pat Bev thinks he is, but he might be. Bro, he's what he's Pat Bev's dad. Pat Bev's dad. <laughs> what? But Drew Holiday, Drew Holiday, they made it so physical and so taxing on Chris Paul. You could tell by the way he was playing. And look. He has to take a lot of responsibility on that one. Like, he made some bad plays. I felt like there was far too many situations last night when he gave up open shots. Only when he needed to, he was needed to be aggressive did he actually do it. In fact, I don't think the Suns are in that game, if not for campaign's um, 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 burst at the beginning of the second quarter. Yeah. That's, what was what, that's what set the tone for the Phoenix, Sun, Phoenix Suns to be in that game, not Chris Paul. So that's where I have the issue with him. But I also have to look at Drew Holiday, um... Connaughton, uh, PJ Tucker at times, Middleton. The yep. defense they played on this guy, on him and Booker, they made it so tough, so physically demanding yep. that it was tough for any small point guard to do it. And that's the thing. This is what you can do with small point guards. You can't eliminate them. That's exactly. why it's tough for them. But I, no. I can't blame Chris Paul fully. No, but no, even no, no, to no, add no. to that, to no. add to that, um, oh, what was the point I was going to make? They were going at him. Because mm. look, look at their lineup. He's their weakest defender. Unless you want to say him and Booker. Him and Booker, Booker are the weakest good defenders. Like Booker, Booker played good and Booker's, Booker's bigger. Do you get what I mean? Mm. Bro, if you've got Drew Holiday, Middleton and Giannis all trying to get you switched onto them, then you, um, you're um you expected to be the point guard, putting up 30, be the glue guy. It's tough, uh, man. Like, it's, it's a tough right. ask. So I'm, I'm not putting that on you. I'm just saying that. Yeah, yeah, no, I know, I'm just saying I know. that. He, he, he didn't have a great series. But it's tough to take a team that hasn't been in the playoffs in like a decade and suddenly win a chip. Do you know what I mean? What I would also say is, is, of course, is very quickly doing with them. Let me let me get it clear that I'm not saying he's the reason they lost or I'm blaming. Yeah, yeah. I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, when it's all said and done, we're not going to be able to talk about. Oh, it was really tough. What we're going to remember is they were two new up. He had the opportunity, because what what were we saying? They only had to win one game away from away from home, and they would they would have won a chip. No, and but bro, the, no, the hardest game is the closeout game. Of course, so or they had to they had to win two. I think no, the closeout to... game is the hardest game. Wait, what do you mean by the closeout game? The Suns didn't get a closeout game. The, no, I'm saying you said if they won on the the box court and went up three one, yeah, or three zero. Oh, that last game is the hardest game to win. Do you know what I'm saying? No, no, so it's not as though you instantly he win. He didn't even get that though. Do you know what I mean? No, he definitely, definitely, that. definitely. So my point, like the what I'm the overarching point and the main thing about the Chris Paul situation for me is that Chris Paul has too many dents. We can give him the credit. Bro, you can still have dents, but have credit. Like fam, you, you, there's credit for Chris Paul. No one can disrespect Chris Paul's legacy, his career, what he's been able to achieve, what he's been able to do. OKC, Houston Rockets, um, um, the Suns, like even with the Clippers, like no one can disrespect his career. However, we can criticize the ceiling. We can criticize the expectation that we had. We expect Chris Paul to get a ring. We expect James Harden to get a ring. We expected possibly even maybe some people expected Russell Westbrook to get a ring. 
We expected Allen Iverson to get a ring. Of course, there's context surrounding this. However, when it's all said and done, these great players didn't win rings. Bro, what's the bit? Bro, when they're bantering Charles, uh, Charles Barkley about not having a ring, you think that doesn't, like, of course, maybe now it's less so annoying, but. Bro, you think it wasn't batting, at, uh, batting away at him the early, uh, maybe the years after his retirement and whatnot? Bro, yeah, for it, sure. it hurts. These guys know they should have won rings and that it's going to hurt Chris Paul. Like, in my uh, opinion, it's going to. Uh, to say that they know they should have won, that like, it's, that's, I don't know. I think that's fair. But it's just like, okay, they should have won rings. But it's a lot of things that it takes to win a chip. Do you know what I mean? The, the, the situation has to be right. The um, circumstances have to be right. And um, Chuck Barkley, not ha- for me, the way I see it is, if you don't have jewellery, for me, it doesn't make you any less of a player. It just means that you don't have the cheese on top. You don't have the thing that makes you all-time great. Do you know what I mean? That you can still be great and legendary, but you don't have the... Do you know what I mean? That, yeah, but the cheese that, on top is that resume. Because, look, the cheese on top at the end of the day... If yeah, but as you said, he's still, he's still in top five conversations. Do you know what I mean? And even if he had the ring... Where would he be? Fourth, fifth. It's still in the no, same but thing. That, but, but that's what we're saying, though. Like that's what the difference between a ring and not having a ring does. A, a no ring puts you in the conversation. A ring cements your legacy. That is huge. That's, that's yeah, but massive. but that's why that's why the point that Nadim made is key as well because he said, and I agree. You were saying as well. It's fine margins. Do you get know what I mean? Like it's hard to say that. Um, oh, just because you don't have a ring, you're this, this less of a player. When re- the only thing that stopped you is someone's foot being on the line or things of that nature. Darren, though, Do you get what I mean? Okay, I'm Darren and the dim though, but this is what I want you to picture in it because I, uh, this is a good debate and I actually am very interested in it. What I'm picturing though is that at the beginning of this series, what would we be saying? What would the book you saying? Odds Sounds- on favorite to win finals MVP. It's because of Giannis' oh, injury though. No, of course, of course. But even when Giannis came back and dropped 20 and they won, everyone said, oh, the Suns are still going to win. Do you know what I mean? Like, that was still... Because Giannis came back and the Suns still won convincingly. Yeah, but... I he, know... I know Giannis but, putting up 20 ain't going to lead them to a, a chip. But we... No one... I'm just, What I'm trying to say is that th- th- there wasn't the anticipation that Giannis was suddenly just going to go from having an injury that seemed serious to being able to consistently put up good performances on the offensive end and on the defensive end. We, they, people were thinking that surely it's going to have to counteract each other. Even if he has one big game, it's going to hurt one of the other games that he has. Do you know what I'm saying? But instead, Giannis had four big games. Do you know what I mean? So my thing is, we can't just overlook the fact that even if Giannis was fit, we can't overlook the fact that it was between Giannis and Chris Paul for finals MVP. It was between them two. And Chris Paul came out short. Bro, at the end of the day, this is a competition. No, no, no. In terms of the bookies and the eyes of everyone. Oh, okay, okay. Well, okay. Yeah, yeah, going into the series. Yeah, going okay, into the okay. series. I'm not saying me. I'm just saying that that was what the narrative was saying. And even if... Bro, we, we, we even spoke about it with Lashard. Like, even I, I said, oh, Booker's been the one playing well, but it doesn't matter. They're going to give it to Chris Paul if they win. So, I'm saying, let's not forget that this is a competitive sport. This is a competition. This is about winning and losing. And at the end of the day, Chris Paul has lost and lost yet again. And mm-hmm. I just don't want that to get lost in translation when we're, 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 we're saying that there's context to it, which there is, saying yeah. that there are circumstances to it, which there are. I'm just saying we still need to recognise the fact that Chris Paul lost and this is mm-hmm. another loss on Chris Paul's resume. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Yeah, no, I 100% I understand that. I think where, for me, the thing kind of comes in is because we see what this type of conversation can do to players and what they create. And you talk about the way they talk about... Uh, we had this conversation about Doncic where we said that if Doncic doesn't you know, start advancing further down the playoffs, you know, race, they'll start saying, why can't Doncic win a ring? And then it creates situations like where you're having to win super teams to show people yeah. that, no, I'm actually great. And yeah. that's not what we want. We enjoyed, we enjoyed watching Giannis win a ring yesterday because, no, he, he literally got it out the mud. This wasn't oh, easy. This was, this was from level zero ground floor lower ground floor going up to the top of the Burj Khalifa this was what he did in the last what eight nine years so that's tough that's why we enjoyed watching this guy get the benefits and see the rewards of his hard work but if you start having conversations around your greatness is attractive because you didn't get this ring which we're not but there's some people who will do that 
you create a situation where guys are having to leave their teams because they have to go and prove to people that they're great. And that's what I don't want to do. I, I look at Chris Paul now the same way I did before the ring, largely because I'm giving Drew Holiday a lot of credit because I don't think CP choked. I just think Drew Holiday did a great job. And, and bro, why, Drew yeah. Holiday was just switching between Book and Chris Paul. Whoever he was guarding was the, getting strapped up. The thing is, whoever was ha- whoever was had it going, that's what Jordan Lee was guarding. Yesterday, campaign, that that burst <laughs> at the start of the second quarter. Jordan Lee came straight in. He didn't look at Booker. He didn't look at CC. Shut off the wing. Shut it off. That, that was the funniest thing. And that, that's that's why I have to give... That's why I look at the ring argument and go... Yeah, one team out of 30 each year wins a ring. Like, there's been some great players who've had great teams that haven't crossed that line. You look at, obviously, Charles Barkley. You know, you talk, Reggie Miller. Um, What's his name? The guy, oh, Chris Jordan. Webber. Exactly. So it's it's hard. Westbrook, look at the old Westbrook does these AI. Level. AI, you know, Steve Nash. Is this Steve Nash winning ring? You, uh, Steve Nash Steve Nash ain't, Steve Nash ain't yeah. got a ring. Exactly. So it, it's tough and it's really hard to do. That's why I sometimes when and we're not doing it here, but sometimes I see people having ring debates. I saw people someone having a ring debate today and I didn't like it. And it just distracts distracts from the greatness that these guys are putting on show. And that's why I don't like sometimes the debates that come out of it. I, but this is what I'm saying now. This is where I now come in and have to be the Grinch. I, and this is what I love you, man, for in particular. And that's what brings me into check as well. Like I love the fact that you, man, look at it and make sure and try to remind people that, bro, fair enough, yeah, the ring's there, but let's not detract from their greatness. We don't need to um, basically poo on someone's resume and legacy exactly. just because they weren't yeah. able to win a ring. I totally agree with that, and I've come round on that. Like, I totally agree. And that's what happens too much. Just for the sake of debate, just for the sake of, oh, I want to get the one up on this person, so I have to say this, or I have to be able to discredit. I I totally get that. However, however, without competition, we can't have a podcast like this. Without the person not winning the ring, we can't can't have conversations. This this is what drives our conversation. Let's let's not cap now. Chris Paul not having a ring is a big conversation. Because he's a player we expect to have won. Like, that's yeah. what it comes down to, isn't it? And that's what I'm trying to bring forward, that I... It, it's even... It's, this is not even me. Maybe this is maybe that's for other people and other analysts. But me saying that Chris Paul doesn't have a ring is even a testament to how much I rate Chris Paul. It's not me dis, dis, discrediting or disrespecting him. I just think Chris Paul should have a ring because he's that good. Do you know what I mean? Like, when we talk but about... But do you think do you think he was ever well, in the situation where he should have won a ring? Facts. The Clippers, he should have won a ring. He collapsed. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Harden was on the bench as well, and he collapsed. That that. But that was the. I think that was the second round, didn't it? I'm trying to think who won the chip that year. Second round, what? they would have played the Spurs. I think it was no, the no. Spurs that won it. Was it around them time? Spurs and Heat. Those are the that... teams that was going back. Oh and no, forth. they beat the Warriors that year in the first round, and the Warriors yeah. came back the next year. Exactly. Um, that been... year, that year was the Spurs might that be... won it, and the that Spurs, was the yeah. that was the the hungry Spurs. As in yeah. the Spurs that lost the year before and came back and destroyed the Miami Heat when they came back. But the thing is, but the thing is, Chris Paul should have. We should have seen Chris Paul go against them. We should have seen what that would have been like. But, but then it goes back. Was. It goes back to the point I was making earlier that he he was the best player on those teams, and we've only seen two small guards lead mm-hmm. their teams to a chip. Do you get yeah. what I mean? Like, I think if he was on a team where he was the, the allowed to be the floor general and he had a player better than him, then you can say boom. You should have won the chip, but no, only no, no. two guys have done it in the history of the Very league. Quickly. It's Very hard to quickly. say you should have been on that list. The the Very duo. Quickly, I, the, sorry. The tw- 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 sorry, very quickly. Twenty fifteen was Della Vadova. It was um, the year that the Warriors beat the Cavs that didn't have. Kyrie yeah, but I think it was the year before. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. it was the year before that the the Clippers beat them in the first round. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's yeah, the, yeah. That's but the I'm saying the year. The year the Rockets beat them, where Harden um, was on the bench, and they were three two up in that, they should have won that game. And they, because yeah. the, the, the yeah, but that uh, wasn't that was only the in the Rock- second round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You but still had Rock- to go I, through. I, I think yeah, that serious hospitals after that. Final. I think that Clippers team would have been in the Warriors. Yeah, but that no, the Warriors weren't in the finals that year. That's what I'm saying. It was in 2014 that that was. I think or was that 2015? No, the Rocket series. This is the Rocket Series was in 2015. 2015. How? Well, that was the second round. But then, what? 
Who did the Warriors play? So in that the means the Rockets, the, the 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 Warriors beat the Rockets in the conference final. Yeah, the 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 Warriors general gentlemen swept the Rockets in the conference finals. Okay. To get to the first champ, the first champ in the first championship. Their first yeah. championship. Their first championship. No, that but if the Clippers and that was the year everyone said LeBron would have won. That was the year LeBron took the, the Warriors to, to six games with Della Vadova as the second best player, fam. And you're telling me now, let's just say, oh, fam, all things like, of course, it's so hard, and I don't like it's that. hypothetical, is it? Yeah, yeah, it's mad hypothetical, and I don't even like it. But I, I believe the Clippers would have beaten the Warriors, and if the, the Clippers faced the same Cle um, Cavs team, bro, Chris Poole, DeAndre Jordan, and, and, and Blake Griffin should be beating that LeBron and Della Vadova team. So of course LeBron, yeah, we know LeBron, LeBron's greatness. I know it's hypothetical. I don't even want to. No, nah, I'm not even on the LeBron thing. I think the Warriors would have been the tougher hurdle because that's yeah, when yeah, that was the finals. That was the finals. Like yeah, no, I'm saying would've it would have been, been it would have been harder to get past the Warriors than the Cavs. Yeah, you know what I mean, Cavs, without yeah, Kyrie, yeah, yeah. that Warriors team, people sleep on them because it was their first chip, bro. That was mm -hmm. when Steph Steph Curry was became Steph Curry. You know what I mean, that was when um Clay Thompson was. Lighting teams like and Draymond Green probably won the defensive player of the year that Steve season. Kerr was coaching out of his mind, Ex and that's when Steve Kerr implemented the ball movement, all that type of stuff. Do you I mean, got, I, I, and the Clippers, I always felt like Darren, the Clippers think, they had the talent, they had the talent, but I mean, but that knowing what we know, know now, think, don't yeah. you man think, yeah, that Chris Paul should have at least been to this? Shouldn't be Chris, this shouldn't have been Chris Paul's first NBA finals. Yeah, yeah. I agree with that, I agree with that, yeah, but yeah, that's but, what okay, I'm saying. knowing what we know fair. now. A few weeks ago, we were having conversations about Doc. Knowing what we know now, is it not understandable that they make it? Like, <laughs> right now, like, right, that's, that's, that's some Doc shade. That's some Doc shade. No, no, no. But the reason why we can't do that, though, is because on reflection, of course, it's easy to say that now that there's a pattern. But when we're still going through it and the pattern's still getting created, bro, you're in, you're in charge of yeah. how no, your destiny goes. I, don't, I, I wouldn't say that they were the favourites considering the fact that Giannis played the way that he was healthy. Not healthy, but he was good. He was healthy enough to dominate the series the way that I he did. I disagree, man. D and so you're saying that the Suns should have won this series? Relax, relax. The <laughs> why that's, I disagree, that's what you're saying, though. That's what you're saying. No, it's not. The reason why I disagree is because I thought Giannis was coming back early. So even after I saw him hit the, the, the get that 20-point game, I thought, rah, they're trying to get every ounce of Giannis and I thought the Suns would win, even with Giannis on the court, because I thought Giannis was coming back too early. I looked at the injury. And yeah, but I'm saying... The same thing that happened to AD, and they, they tried to bring AD back. That's what I... That's I of course, if, if they were all fit at the beginning, I, I would have... I still probably would have lent with the Suns. I probably would have lent to them, just I in seven. I would have. I would have. Yeah, but I, I said... My Suns in seven. Yeah, but that, that was based on the fact... That's what I'm saying. It doesn't matter what we thought about how Giannis was going to look prior to the series or after game one. The guy just dropped 50 in a closeout game. And the guy was the best player on both ends of the court. And the guy is seven feet tall, handling the ball, doing everything. I'm, like, saying, I'm saying, given hindsight... I don't, me, I don't think you can get on to me, though, for, for saying if everything, if everyone was fit and we've seen how the Suns have been playing and we've seen how the Bucks have been playing... I take the Suns in seven. I don't think you can get on to me for saying that. I, I think there was a I, legitimate I would, case for the Suns to be the favourites. I think it was legitimate. Bro, there's a reason why they're in the finals. Do you know what I mean? But the Bucks had the best player on the court by a significant margin. If you're taking into account what he does on both ends of the court, the, the Bucks had the best player. Um, and, and we said it, that the matchups were intriguing. Like Because I thought that the, the backcourt of the Suns would outplay um, the, the Bucks, but Chris Paul wore down. Do you get what I mean? And that's why we, when we got into the nitty gritty about how that like, he wore down. I, also, um, I don't want to use that as an excuse, but um, it's been mentioned a lot that he's got hand injuries. Do you get what I mean? And it makes sense because that's why he was turning the ball over, stuff like that. But um, yeah, I think I, 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 I think the the Bucks would have been the favourites if Giannis was healthy. But um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, mean, I kind of see Daniel's point on this one. I, I, I still had Suns in seven. I, I still thought the Suns... Yeah, but, but that was given that Giannis was not going to be healthy. It wasn't only that, though. No, even, even the after the second game. game yeah, not that it's like, oh, yeah, the Suns are going to win. It wasn't anything. Mm -hmm. Of course, it was nothing like that. Yeah. It was like, a, uh, I just I just lean over and say the Suns in seven. Just because I've seen how the Chris Paul had been playing, Devin Booker was playing so well, I thought that 
the perimeter game of the Suns would kill the Bucks as well. I didn't envisage the Suns would shoot that badly. I didn't envisage the Bucks would be able to stop them as well as they did. Like I just felt like the Bucks still to win a ring weren't over the top, and I expected Aiton to play much better than he did. I thought Bridges would have been a Aiton. huge key in the series, but he wasn't really. He was really an non-entity, if we're being honest. And so no, he did. He did. Played well defensively, but yeah, mm. but I'm talking about offensively, of course, because offensively is where they not struggled, but is where they were lacking. Like it wasn't their usual selves. That's why I'm saying I just would have lent with them. Not that it yeah, that's fair. Them. That's fair. Yeah. But I also think the Bucks defensively are a juggernaut, bro. Do you know what I mean? Um, we can agree now. I think that they've got the best guard defender in the league, and they got the best two way player in the league. I think Giannis is the best two way player in the league. Like, yeah, so do I. So do I. So do I. Yeah, because you know how Kawhi was Paul George, even people mentioned Kate Bro. Giannis best two way play. If we're not gonna give him best, yeah, player, right now, right now for sure. Yeah. But um, yeah, fam, the Bucks, the Bucks got a lot of heat, bro. Like the Bucks, um, last year had an all time defense. This year they had the best offense in the league. Do you get what I mean? They're literally a, a, a complete team, especially with the way uh, Middleton uh, stepped up late in the game, like. Like obviously, it's easy to say in hindsight. Do you got? I mean, obviously, you you guys are saying what you thought prior to the series, but I just think based on what we've seen, it's hard to say. Oh, the Suns should have won that series. Mm-hmm. No, nah, it was never about should have. Of course, no one can say the Suns should have won. Chris Paul should have won. We're just using the games that we've watched, seeing how they played, seeing what maybe they could have done differently, seeing how Chris Paul. Because look, at the end of the day, as much as we have all our our love for Chris Paul. We can all agree that we believe there were certain moments in games where he should have played better. Like the, oh, for sure. with, with the game five that he was terrible for the first three quarters, tried to ramp it up in the fourth quarter, but by that time it was already too late. Like game game uh, four, it's poor in game. That, that, I think game four was where you think you could drop like 10 points or something like 10 that. 10 points, yeah. So like... Yeah, he's, no, he definitely could have played better. Moments. And that's what it is, margins, man. Margin. No, for sure. But let's 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 give some flowers to Drew Holiday. Like, yo, I, I, my thing is, I, I, he wasn't great offensively, but yo, what he was doing defensively, I, I take that. I mean, I'm not looking. I'm not get if that guy's in my locker room. I'm not looking at him saying, "Oh, I need more from you, bro. Keep doing what you're doing." And 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 you know what I mean? We'll do what we need to do because that guy is a defensive wizard. Like they were putting him on Chris Paul, shutting off the water, putting him on Devin Booker. Locking it down. Um, another um, thing that that gave them huge success was they limited their their three point attempts. I think they only shot more than about in the last three games or so. They shot nineteen threes, bro. They shot thirteen of nineteen. The Suns shot thirteen of nineteen. I believe that went in game four or five. And um, do you know what I mean? You're trying to get up, if you're shooting it that well, you're trying to get up more. Do you know what I mean? Nineteen attempts is nowhere near enough if you're shooting sixty eight percent. You know what I mean, but the Bucks are just so good defensively that it's like mm. it's crazy, man. Like Drew Holiday, defensive wizard, uh, Middleton, um, what he was able to do closing games, gotta give him his flowers. I just think the Bucks really, really, and the thing is, they improved so much like throughout the playoffs. Do you know what I mean? Because remember when we did the watch along, they used to play so such frustrating basketball, was like play to your strengths, stop trying to be, do you know, what I mean, a concept. I mean, play to, 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 to the players that you have. And I think in the end, they learned it that, bro, they were attacking the basket on every single play. Do you know what I mean? And they weren't doing that earlier on in the playoffs. So they definitely grew into their identity and uh, everyone deserves credit for that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, no, 100%. I think as well, there were times, and I remember that net series where they, there were times where they would go ISO heavy. And ISO is cool sometimes, especially in the playoffs. You know, you, those are the guys that, you know, uh, are to be fair. We saw Middleton closing games. The shot you hear of a Booker yesterday to basically ice the game was. Booker nice. played great defense on that one. That was just yeah. tough make. Like, fair enough. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's nothing much you can say about that. So they figured who they were, as you said, as the season, you know, wound down. And I, I was just happy to see Giannis just go into the paint and say, none of you are stopping me. And if you try, I'm going to the free throw line. And to take 19 free days and to make 17, boy, there was no chance to win in that game. No chance. Facts, facts, yeah. facts. Big facts. No, 100%, man. But yeah, man. But once again, we say big congratulations to 
Giannis Middleton, Drew Holiday, the rest of the team, Buda and all there and the Hey, no, we got a shout out D Book though. D Book for yeah, his first for his first yeah. playoff run. Yo, that mm. guy shut a lot of people up. All them and I'm not I don't man, you man don't try to put that on me. I'm not an empty yeah. stats guy. I'm not an empty stats. I'm not someone that says ah oh, they're empty stats. No, that's not me. I'm a I want to see it in the playoffs. And he showed what that is about in the playoffs. I remember on the, the episode with Lashar that asked you, man. Everyone says Chris Poole, the leader of the team, but Devin Booker is the guy that's consistent every yeah, night. Because I've been saying that. Since. <laughs> chill, 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 chill. Because we, we've, we've had his chances to revisit this, and you didn't really want to. With now him. you want to revisit it. Now you want to revisit it. I remember. What about, like, I remember specific, that, no, no, that was in the context of an all game. Exactly. Different yeah. context. Different yeah. context. Different context. No, 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 but it still has the same... It still no, no, it does. It does. It does. It does. It's two Darren, conversations. It does. It's two different Darren, conversations. Who should make the All-Star team? Who should make the All-Star And who's the leader of the team? It's two different conversations. No, the leader, leader of the team is Chris Paul, in a way. Is it not? No, exactly. But yeah, but the, that's what I'm saying. As the, as, the, as, the, as the series progressed, bro, Devin Booker was the only guy pretty much showing up. And no, the only no, no, reason no, why the Chris Paul showed up in the last game is because Drew Holiday... Stepped onto leader, Devin Booker rather than the leader Chris of the team is definitely still Chris Paul. But the point I'm trying to make is that I always thought that Devin Booker was the 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 special guy. Of course, Devin Booker needed Chris Paul to convert everything that he was doing into wins and into know how, into experience and whatnot. However, when we're talking about that, it's 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 the it's the LeBron Dwayne Wade effect on a on a on a lesser scale, fam. LeBron mm-hmm. went to. Miami to learn from D Wade. D Wade had the know how, had the experience, but LeBron was still the best player and the main guy. I still think that Wade was the leader. It was just when, we- and it, it even takes a leader to say, You need to take us to the promised land. You need to be the one. And that's I think that's what Chris Paul was saying to D Book. But I think Chris Paul didn't, Chris Paul didn't help. Did that to D Book, but didn't help. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Didn't give him Would enough you- of the support. To then say because when Devo was dropping back to about forty games, where was Chris Paul? Chris Paul was where? there to found, bro. And that is what we're talking about here. Do you know what I'm saying? No, so, but I'm the one. I'm I'm the one that posed the question. I said, "Yo, is Devin Booker the leader of this team?" And I'm not talking about emotional leader. I'm talking about on court leader. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because really and truly, then depends on what you define as a leader, in it as a leader, I mean, exactly. It's like K- KD. KD's been the best player on all his teams, but has he been the leader? He's never. You know what I mean, so it just depends on how you perceive it. Isn't it? 100%, I will 100%. say this though. I, I don't. Yeah. No, I was just saying I, this is not the last we've seen on Devin Book and the finals. That oh, that guy will no. be back. Far from Definitely that man. Back, Far from yeah. That brother is gonna be special. I don't even think he stays um, in Phoenix for his whole career. I don't see that happening. Uh, hot that take. Ha, ha, no, that's not. That's not. Hot take. How many guys stay in? How many guys stay in one location for their whole career? No, I'm just fighting this. Yeah, in his prime. In his prime. Is there any sources telling you this? my front <laughs> office sources and them things there but now nah, man um before Masa, we Masa, up, Masa, Masa, Oya, 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 <laughs> you gotta be american with it <laughs> you, you're saying, you think they're calling you balogun fam they're saying balogun from balogun what's it called i'm not gonna get into it the other day the, uh, talking <laughs> about nah, nigeria man. Basketball team. Hey, anyway. no, nah, let's not even bring that up. Me and Darren are already <laughs> talking about in Dio. Yeah. That's Stephen Nays <laughs> away from for that. But, hey, um, before we close out the episode, one thing I definitely did want to discuss is um, one thing that's co- been coming out recently. The Lakers, apparently they're going to move aggressively to improve their roster. Um, there's a lot Trying of... Trying to get a that, point guard. Yeah, a veteran, a veteran point guard has been what's been stre- stressed by a number of the sources. Um, the plan is just basically to stack up the team again, stack up the team again with a lot of high quality experience. So not just experienced players that might not be able to experience players who'll be able to offer, who'll be able to input, who'll be able to do great things. So I see, I see um, Melo going there still. You think so? Yeah, I see Melo rolling still, and I think he'd be a nice piece, man. Big shot maker. When when LeBron's off the court, you can give it to him in the post. Yeah, you know I mean, it makes sense. No, I hear but that yeah, still. So, what, what what do you mind think about Chris Paul? Actually, do you know what? Let's let me ask you a different question. I think this one's too easy of a question. Let me see how you lot respond then. Who do the Lakers need more, Chris Paul or Russell Westbrook? 
I think so. You're asking who would be the better addition? Who'd be the better addition? I wanted them to go first. I wanted them to go first. Nah, go on, oh, boy, Chris Paul, uh, yeah, I, 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 boy, I think it's a good sign that you're yeah. really, you know, torn. That, that, that's a tough one because most people would say easy, Chris Paul. No, that's it's a tough one because Westbrook is like he's a great player in himself, the but beast. I think Chris Paul next to LeBron would probably be the better fit, especially with AD as well. Who's I think Chris Paul's the better shooter and the free throw shooter as well. Yeah, for sure. The shooting on that team needs to work like the, the other two guys will need to be shooters as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah I'll probably go Chris Paul. Yeah, I think I'll go Chris Paul. But Obviously, a, Darren, I want you to argue that because I think you'll argue the Westbrook narrative and I want you to bring up some of the things that you were talking about in the chat as well and go into detail about it. But I think I what I, I, I wasn't trying to come across like, oh, it's easily Chris Paul, but I just think for what I know the Lakers issues to be, is Westbrook what I want? You're going to need to bring in players who can play off the ball as well. One thing that isn't spoken about enough is that even when Rondo was at the on the Lakers in that playoff, run bro he was someone you could give open shots to he could make his open shots yeah. he was even making contested shots like mm -hmm. off the dribble and that is not something that you really like uh, ascribed with um rondo so for me it's just chris paul you you take him now man i think better shooter he can organize we're not going to have the greatest of teams in terms of the the bench the the the, the substitutes and he, he'll be able to organise that, especially when LeBron's off the court. LeBron will be able to take more time off the court as well, um, mm -hmm. where you need him. In, where handle you the ball less as well. And I think... Handle the ball less. And that's key for him, especially going into the playoffs where you want a fully fit, fully healthy look. Bro, that's why he got injured. Let's let's not, Bro, the reason why LeBron got injured is because AD got injured. LeBron was pushing for that MVP. And he just had to handle the ball all the time on every single possession playing about 35 to 40 minutes a game. And then Solomon Hill just does that nonsense. Just acts like a okay. fool. So, I, I will say yeah. this, If I'm picking up Punga for the Lakers, it's Kyle Lowry. He's the one I'd call. Over so, Chris Paul? Not, not based on who's a better player. I think Kyle Lowry is... I, we said it. I don't want to open that kind of worms Lakers. again, man. That was the Lakers. guy I wanted. I wanted yeah, him. I think, he's the one the I wanted him. I think he's the one they call. I think he's the one they should call. Apparently, he's time. gonna go to New Orleans, though. Apparently, the Pelicans want him bad, and they've got a lot of money to offer him as well, so exactly. just... especially if they let they let I, Lonzo go. I, I hope yeah. that Zion and Ingram have been watching these last two championship runs. That's what I'm gonna say, bro. Them might need to be looking at themselves in the mirror, fam. Look at the talent that they have, fam. They should be there's no mm -hmm. way they should miss the playoffs. And let me again. let me tell you something. This is something that we're going to discuss in the off-season. Off-season will allow us to dissect a lot of teams, and that's why I'm happy because I've been annoyed that we've just... Like, there's been... Obviously, it's great to talk playoffs, but then you just neglect so many other teams. Yeah. Bro. So we'll get to preview all these other teams. Bro, the, the trajectory that Giannis showed every single year in the league and the improvement that he made in his points and his rebounding and his assists... Fam, Ingram is not making that... Sense, and Ingram should be making that level. That growth should be happening year in, year out for me. That's how good Ingram is, fam. Like, let's not get it twisted. I was hoping that we could sneak in Kuzma in that deal and, and keep Ingram instead of Kuzma because I thought, imagine Ingram on this team with LeBron and them, man. Uh, I'm, yeah, I, that's yeah. harsh. That's harsh. Like, Ingram's been making steady progress, like, these last two years especially. Not Numbers-wise, yeah, but I still... I. I agree with Daniel that you got to get more wins. Like, you and Zion are both two All-Stars. There's no way you should be missing a playoffs oh, when you've got two All-Stars. I think it's incredibly telling that you fired your coach after one year. For like, sure. That, that's For the sure. most telling thing that I, I, I can pick from their season. Good, yeah, well, the so. circumstances, the circumstances ain't been great. But still, fam, you got sometimes you've got transcend circumstances. We've seen playoff coaches get sacked. Do you know what I mean? Like, you can Tell still again, make the playoffs and get sacked. What, what they're looking for, what they need... Is who's the who, who have they hired a new coach yet or they're still looking? Uh, they did, didn't they? Let me check. Did they hire a coach? Yeah, check quick. I'm trying maybe to remember the Pelicans. Maybe I don't. Not. I don't think they have. No, they haven't, they haven't hired someone yet. Yeah, they haven't no, hired no. someone yet. Yeah, so they my thing is, soon. bro, what they need is a Monty Williams. They need someone what? who can bring in. No, I think they were what? speaking to one of his assistants. 
Oh, what? I, I, yes. I, I don't know yeah. you guys in the running. I don't yeah, know. I think so. I believe so. I think I saw the reports as well. Mm-hmm. There's a couple yeah, no, guys like, that they're linked to. They need someone who could just work with the young talent who can who can who can progress Zion's game. I think Zion. There's so many things you can do with Zion. You can turn him into an absolute beast. Um, Ingram's there. Um, you still got a couple of experienced old heads who can help that team. So, like, I think yeah, yeah there's so much Steven that can Adam. be done. Steven That's Adams it. has been working on his three point shot. Hey, bro. are you mad? Are you mad? Nah, facts, <laughs> man. Also, I'm dying. Adam, Steven Adams becomes a version of Brook Lopez because Brook Lopez couldn't always shoot the free. No, he couldn't. Bro, he, he, he becomes game. a very, very useful tool in the oh, league. For sure. So, you know, sure. my thing is, I just sometimes, sometimes coaches do certain things that reek of desperation. Remember watching last year Zion run the point guard position? I was so sick. I actually couldn't watch Pelican games, and I know. No, but bro, bro, Zion, he put up his best no, numbers when he was running. That's points. good for him. I'm not trying to ever see that again. I don't want <laughs> to ever see that again. Put Lozo back in that position. Look, I'm sorry. Sometimes let your let your point guard be a point guard, and everyone's trying to be innovative these days. That's why you got Ben Simmons playing a point guard position. Go put your butt back in the post. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, but they they don't even like Lozo. It sounds, it sounds like Lozo yeah, is gonna hard. leave. That's odd. Yeah. I mean, you get Kyle Lowry, I guess he's an upgrade. So, yeah, but, for sure. Lonzo's, I like him. You know, I like him. For, I like him for the Celtics. If they don't get like Dame or someone like that, bro. And I like him for the Lakers as well. I'll take him after you. After he gave him up, we gave him up. We gave him up for Anthony Davis, bro. What you want us an to apology, do? An apology and twenty mil a year, and we'll talk. Nah, about. nah. He knows the deal, man. He knows the deal. Anthony Davis, we can't turn that deal down. 100%. It happens, man. There's certain but, things you can't be mad at. No. Yeah, exactly. I take him, but to go back to mm. the original question, and um, Chris Paul or Westbrook, mm. I, I do think Chris Paul would be the better addition, um, but I see him staying in Phoenix. Um, the Lakers can't offer him the money that um, certain teams can, so even if he does leave Phoenix, don't see him going to the Lakers. But Westbrook, bro, I think Westbrook, everyone thinks that Westbrook would be like a bad addition. I think Westbrook could bring a lot. I mean, the Lakers are at their best in the full court, and we know what Russell Westbrook is on when he's in transition. Imagine Ooh. LeBron and Westbrook together, and then you got AD running the lane. Like, yo, like that is nasty. Imagine, <laughs> that is nasty. Um, Go on. I think and about that, the news from Westbrook to LeBron. Exactly. And the thing is, it, the funny thing is, they're so different because Chris Paul slows the pace down. Westbrook brings the pace up. Do you know what I mean? And I feel like Westbrook, um, the Lakers are better at a quicker pace. Do you know what I mean? So um, Westbrook makes sense with that. I'm not saying he's a better addition, but I'm just saying he he could bring a lot. Um, he can also just be the the floor general. Um, he he had the most assists in the league last year, so it would make sense. But um, I'm open to it, man. I'm open to Westbrook, but really and truly, I don't know, man. The Lakers got a lot of things to to decide. I'm I, I don't mind getting Dinwiddie as well. Dinwiddie's there. I'm open to getting oh, yeah. him. The only that problem means with a free agent. Again, like it's the money, man. It's the money. Like Lakers have to be a sign and trade, isn't it? Probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who that's what they're to looking to really do. Who are you willing to give like, us? Who no, but that's what that's what um them. that's what will be like. That's what allows the Lakers to possibly move for Westbrook, like sign and trade, because that was what was rumored. Then you put Kyle Kuzma, Taylor but, Martin, Tucker, and but, you also if, you're the, if you're the Wizards, Shooter. are you doing that? Bro, it depends, isn't it? Because really and truly, you had Russell Westbrook and Bradley Bill last year and you scraped into the plane. Do you know what I mean? It's not like you're making noise. Yeah, but also you know teams I mean? think about, you know, it's not just... Look, t- these teams are also businesses. Westbrook puts people in your seats, especially For coming sure. off a pandemic year where you didn't always have fans in the stadiums. So, sure. and he probably gets you more primetime TV games, that's more eyes on your team. So... It's not a deal. It's a deal that you'd have to force me to do. Like, I need yeah, more I think, than, I think just the, the, the only way you make the deal is if Bradley Bill says, yeah, I'm done here. I'm ready to cut. So, I mean, that's mm-hmm. that's when you make the deal. You don't trade Westbrook when Bradley Bill is still happy. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because then you're basically saying to Bradley Bill, it's time to go. Because well, if you trade Westbrook, Bradley Bill's gone. A lot of Laker fans keep uh, putting... Uh, all these deals together to get all these superstars and I'm looking you big guys have been slandering Kuzma for so long like what makes you think that anyone else is going to take him <laughs> uh, like all these guys, fam, so, 
the value value is relative, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Certain oh, people might look at Kuzma. You do say, a sign and trade with the Nets for them with you, bro. You think they wouldn't take Kuzma and them man for death? They would in a heartbeat. And your then with he's leaving for nothing. Then with he's going to leave right. for nothing. I, but I'm sure there's better deals on the table than than that. It's, it depends. It, no, because yeah, it's not. It's, it's a sign be. and trade. It's a sign and trade. Yeah, no, but it, someone could be offering more to sign him. Anyway, that's the thing. Potentially, yeah. Potentially, yeah. yeah. Unless, just have to wait no. and see. unless the Nets want to do goodbye, Dimwitty and go, all right, where do you want to go? And let's make the deal happen. Which is aye, aye. Dimwitty's looking for 100 M, so I don't see that happening. <laughs> Coming off an ACL, that's, uh, that's a big thing. Dimwitty's looking for bread. Hey, but no, nah, yeah, this whole off is going to be fun to get stuck into, as you said, all the trade rumors, trades, teams, specific teams that breaking them down. Definitely looking for forward sure, to man. getting stuck in. For sure, I mean, yeah, man, that's where we'll nip it in the bud, man. Um, it's been a good conversation, definitely a needed conversation. Um, I'll allow you, man, to just give maybe one little takeaway from the season. One takeaway from the season you want to share with the people. Listen, Giannis Antetokounmpo, stop asking questions of that man. Um, the, the funny thing, Antetokounmpo, it makes so much it's sense, by the way. You know what they As I in, found out, like, it Bro, actually makes so much I read the article and I was like, "Wow, is this is this is this actually <laughs> what happens?" So you go to a country and they just change your surname no, to make no, it no, more no. suited. You know what happened though? It's what? not people are making it seem like they're moving mad, isn't it? It's the fact that I forgot what two letters it is, but in his surname, are they talking about? Those letters aren't in the Greek alphabet, so they actually can't pronounce it. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So there's no, okay. there's no meaning to the letters. So it's like having some random little I- icon in the name. Do you know what I mean? So then Antetokounmpo makes it makes sense. Name. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I understand that, but it's just it's nuts knowing that Antetokounmpo is his actual name. Like, imagine if he came with Antetokounmpo and he's bullying like this. He'll be the man in Nigeria, by the way. The man. <laughs> I feel like he's not as much. He's, he's closer yeah. to his Greek. Do you know what I mean? His Greek roots than he Nigeria. I mean, it was nice to see him, though, say that he obviously reps both countries. In no, the, definitely, uh, definitely. You yeah. imagine yeah. him playing on this team with, like, Bama Debayo. Like... What precious achieve are them man there? Dimwidi. Let me not lie to you, man. Dimwidi's Nigerian. Nigeria had young, yeah. bro. Dimwidi's Nigerian. We could go for gold right. still. Hundred percent, a hundred percent. But yeah, just my takeaway. Um, the guy is amazing, man. The guy is a literally he's a wonder, like basketball wonder. You you don't get guys that size, that that quick, that strong. Um, guys that have uh, got it from the mud, as the dim was saying. The guy came in as the fifteenth pick, and he's he's built his way up to. You can say he's the best player in the league. I won't argue with you if you tell me Yon's the best player in the league. Do you got what I mean? So just flowers to him, and he's a cre- incredible guy. Um. Achieved an incredible thing, and yeah, stop the questions, man. Stop the questions. The guys, he's made. Yeah, I, I, there's a couple. I think one injuries need to go away because next season could really be one of the great NBA seasons. You yeah, have the Nets back. healthy, Warriors are back, Lakers retool, Bucks are back. The Sixers do something. There'll be some team else that, that like, hopefully Jamal Murray's back. So next season could be one like really for the ages. Kawhi Leonard could be, well, he's missing for a lot, but he might be back for the playoffs. Yeah, you never know. So, yeah, I think there's that. I think also there's a place for you in, in the NBA. Like with the draft coming up, some guys will probably go undrafted, some guys are going to late second round, and it'll be tough uh, to get onto the roster for some other guys. And you're watching yesterday, Middleton was in the G League, you know, if, during the season, you saw Christian Wood was nearly an all star. Fred Van Vliet got a ton of money this time last year. So no matter where you're drafted, if you work hard, you come in, you show out your circumstances, you can you can change that. So uh, just, uh, Giannis was a great story and obviously is, but I, I was, you know, Middleton as well was, in, yep. to learn about his story as well was incredible. And yeah, so just like that, like you come in, it applies to everything in life. You come in, you work hard. When you get your foot through the door, kick it down. And that's what those guys did. So. Yeah. Yeah, I like that stuff. I like that. And every every game, every moment is an opportunity to to prove yourself. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Because we saw Trey Young. Trey Young, oh my day. So many people said he's an MC Tats guy, and he was mm. one of the best players in the playoffs. Same so goes. Much fun watching that. Yeah, do you got, exactly. Same goes for Devin Booker. Like these men, uh, they understood the stage that we're on, and they really took advantage of the opportunity. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, 100%. 100%. Um, I think, look, takeaway from the season is... I think you just can't can't fully judge a book by its cover. Do you know what I'm saying? This um, playoffs has brought out huge surprises. Look, Trey Young showing out, Devin Booker showing out, Giannis showing out, Donovan Mitchell can't forget how we bro. We I even thought they they, 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 guys were, the Clippers. they were looking. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> nah. Julius, Julius Randle was one of the guys that was no, empty stats. Guy, no, man. no, I, I'm not talking about the team. I'm talking about that fan. Those fans, uh, apart from the ones yeah, that no, that arena, arena was crazy. Crazy. That arena was crazy. They need man. to be in the playoffs every year, man. So they what? Julius Randle, empty stats guy. You're one of them guys. Yeah, man. Empty oh, <laughs> you're not. So what? He has to prove it in his first playoff run. You can't. You can't give him a second season, no. No, he can. He can. But I just don't think Julius Randle is that good. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying in that's general, fair. Like, that's fair. Period. That's fair. And I, to be fair, I agree. I want him to prove me wrong. I like. I want him to prove me wrong, innit? So. Yeah, I reckon. Um, but, I reckon it's a situation where, when they want to bring the stars in, he makes way for a a trade. They trade him bro, for he, a star. He, he you is a trade piece. Like he should even know that, and he's he's even raising his value. He's helping the Knicks. That's what I'm just saying. That, yeah, yeah. I just think he's yeah. He's cool, Get man. He's cool, man. Yeah, they they should try, man. You throw the house. Julius Randle, R.J. Barrett, um, Obi Toppin. Um, Picks you do you could probably you could probably get him without trading Julius. Yeah, you think so? I don't yeah, think so. and I, I you can, bro. I think you can be OB, OB, RJ, um, Mitchell Robinson, Mitchell, Mitchell Robinson, Robinson. Kevin Knox. Ooh, ooh, everyone, yeah, Kevin Knox, um, Bullock, Reggie Bullock, bro, anyone not hey, named Julius Randall. You can bro, you house. can even take you can even take 10% of MSG if you want, fam. <laughs> you can <laughs> take it like movie. Exactly, um, you can have a little cameo in Spike Lee's next film. You can have it all, but and, and you know what they do? You get you trade all that for Dame, and then you say to Julius, "Thank you for your services." But we're trade gonna, him. We're, we're, we're gonna go get Bradley Bill. <laughs> <laughs> nah, you either get Bradley Bill or match him because you don't want you don't want an, obviously the Dame and Bradley Bill is Dame and CJ two point oh or even five point oh. But yeah, I'm saying you go out and get. Porzingis, you bring Porzingis back, or maybe go get Cat. Do you know what? No, do you oh, know yeah, Cat, 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 Cat is no, the yeah. I, yeah. I, I, I got one more. I got one idea. Go you make you wait for the Clippers to stink next season and go get Paul George. That's what I would 30, do. I 30, 32, 33 year old Paul George uh, just signed a super max uh, in New York. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, it, would be, it would be nuts in, in New York, York though. I thought like, it would be nuts. I need star so power. Nuts. Hey, is he is fun. he ready for the stick though? The criticism. I don't know. He's, he's, so he's not, man. He's not. He's not, man. He's the not. The stick will be you so know. mad. It will be bullying. It will be borderline you bullying. You got Paul George and his PGs. You got Dame and his and his uh and his own shoes in New York already. <laughs> Turn them no, it's nuts. Let's it's have it's that. mad still. That's what I want. Or man. you go and you go and test the waters in Miami. You go and see if you can get Jimmy Butler. <laughs> Bro, I'm telling you. Obviously, Jimmy likes the culture in in Miami, but fam, you you dangle New York for him, bro. You mm. never know, man. You never know. Especially, that, especially if if you already got Dame. That's a stage that's, that's for a Jimmy, fam. Piece. That's a stage for him. Imagine having Jimmy and Dame on the same team, two closers. My goodness, this is not conversations we should have it now. This is two weeks time, three yeah, weeks yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, sure, man. We're getting excited, but now, man, <laughs> trust um, me, trust fam, me. New stuff coming your way. Obviously, last episode of Eyes on the Court for the season. That doesn't really mean much because we're still going to be bringing you that basketball content, new intro, new logo, all of that stuff is coming your way. Don't worry about it. We're sorting ourselves out for the new season. First down is coming back fresher than ever as well as the new season approaches. When's the new NFL sure. season, guys? Like, training camps next week. Training, yeah, some training camps have even started. Season starts yeah. in like eight eight weeks, though. Boy, so soon come. Weeks, so soon come, man. Soon come. Obviously, football stuff obviously going to be on your way. Got an Arsenal little special coming your way. We've got a United special coming your way soon enough. So, yeah, Check man. out the Chelsea special, man. Yeah. Check out the Chelsea special. Still the Chelsea there on the special, channel. Man. Good content, man. Good content there. But, yeah, man. It's been your guys at Eyes on the Court. We are out.